Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director here at danstube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And if you or someone you know is terrified of flying their drone, you are a beginner, you've just got yourself a new drone, or maybe you're considering getting a new drone, then definitely check out the Fearless Drone Academy as it has everything you need to learn as a beginner drone pilot. You can use the code DANSTUBE to save some money over there as well. In today's video, I've got the ultimate mini drone breakdown. Now I've done a few of these in the past, but in this video in particular, we're comparing the Mini 3, the Mini 2, and the Mini SE. Three awesome drones that are perfect for all different price points, and they are actually remarkably similar. So that was something that really interested me when I was doing my research and when I was testing them out. So in this video, I'm gonna let you know all the similarities and all of the differences of these three mini drones. For $619, you can get yourself a capable mini drone here, and maybe you don't wanna use the drone too much, like you're not an avid drone pilot, maybe you're just wanting to get it to capture some photos of you and your family when you go on holiday, or maybe you wanna explore a new location when you go on holiday. Maybe you're not gonna be using it all the time, and maybe where you live, you don't really wanna fly the drone too much. So that's where a cheaper alternative like the Mini SE could come in, and it's still a very capable drone and comes in at 619 Australian dollars for the fly more combo. Now the Mini 2 on the other hand is $949 for the fly more combo. Same deal, you get the drone, you get the three batteries, you get a bag this time, and you also get yourself the controller and the accessories. So $949 for the Mini 2 looks very similar to the Mini SE because it pretty much is the exact same body and design. There's just a few differences here that we'll cover, but it's a little bit more expensive again. It's going up close to that 1,000 point, and that's getting you the Mini 2 Fly More Combo. And now if you do wanna get yourself the Mini 3, which is the newly released Mini drone from DJI, you'll see that it's got a completely different design. Uh, it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance like the Mini 3 Pro. So in terms of what it's offering here, it's actually remarkable similar to the other two drones. There are definitely some differences though, but there are some similarities as well, which I will cover in this video. That was something that surprised me as I was doing my research and testing these drones. They are actually all very similar, but if you wanna get yourself the Mini 3 Fly More Combo Plus, that will cost you 1,188 Australian dollars. And with the Fly More Combo Plus, you get the same thing that I mentioned before. You get the three batteries, you get a bag, you get the drone, the controller, and the accessories, but you're actually getting two plus batteries. Now we'll get into what the plus batteries are a little later on in the video, but plus batteries are actually gonna take the drone over the 250 gram mark. So you have to be mindful of certain rules and regulations that might change based on the weight. Um, but the default battery that you get with it is 249 grams uh, overall when you combine the two, which it actually says on the bottom of the battery there. But if you slot in your plus battery, it's gonna be over the 250 gram mark, um, but it's still a really good combo to get a, a battery that's under 250, and then you get two plus batteries that are gonna net you even more flight time, which we'll get into soon. So if you are interested in any of these drones, definitely check out the D1 store. I've got some exclusive combos over there for some other drones, but if you want any of these these drones, if you want the Mini SE, the Mini 2, or the Mini 3, or maybe you want like a mix match, like maybe you want one drone and then you want a few other accessories, you know, whatever your needs are, uh, message D1 Store over at sales at d1store.com.au. If you mention Dan's Tube, they will help you out with some special, unique pricing that's exclusive to my subscribers. So make sure to mention Dan's Tube and they will help you out over there. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of these three drones and how you can figure out what the right drone is for you. So starting off at the Mini SE, when we look at the camera on this little guy here, it's a decent little camera system. It does the job. It's only capable of 2.7K video up to 30 frames per second, which is usable for most people. But if you're looking for something a little bit more impressive, this is probably not gonna cut the mustard for you, but still 2.7K, like I said at the beginning, maybe you just wanna go on holiday with your family and capture a few little videos. This is gonna do the job for just some basic social media posting and just stuff to keep in your library so you've got some memories. It's also capable of capturing 12 megapixel stills. You cannot capture raw images, but still 12 megapixel stills, JPEG, pretty decent, again, for most people that don't care too much about quality, um, but still, 
you know, not the most impressive camera system on the market, but it still does the job. The sensor on this unit is a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, which is usable for most people out there. And if you don't even know what that means, then it probably doesn't matter. It's probably going to be good enough for you. The other thing is that it's got an aperture of f 2.8, so that's a fixed aperture, meaning that it's gonna allow a certain amount of light in, but you can't adjust how much light you're gonna let in or not let in. It's just fixed at 2.8. But again, for most people, it's going to do the job. You cannot capture, there's no HDR video or photos with the Mini SE. Again, if you don't know what HDR is, it probably doesn't matter to you, but that's just another little limitation of the Mini SE. When we look at the camera system on the Mini 2, you might notice that it looks pretty much identical. It really is the same camera system here. It seems to be a software limitation that's not allowing the Mini SE to go up to 4K, but on the Mini 2, it is 4K ready. So that means that you can capture videos up to 30 frames per second in 4K, which is great great, but it also can only capture the 12 megapixel stills similar to the Mini SE or exactly the same as the Mini SE, um, but you can capture raw images on the Mini 2. So if you're looking for some raw uh, image options, then the Mini 2 has got you covered for just a little bit more expensive than the Mini SE. But it's the same thing here again when it comes to the sensor. It's a one over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, the same as the Mini SE, and its aperture is f2.8. So again, you don't get any like adjustable aperture. You don't get like a larger aperture or anything like that. It really is the same offering here, but just you can capture 4K and you have the raw image options on the Mini 2 over the Mini SE. The other thing to mention is that you can't capture HDR video or photos, although there are some options with third-party applications to unlock some of these features here, um, but that's where we're holding out for the Mini 3. The Mini 3 is where things get a little bit interesting here because it is a completely redesigned camera system and you can see that it is a very nice little camera system on the front there, completely different to the Mini SE and the Mini 2. But this camera system here is capable of 4K 30 frames per second, which on paper is the same as the Mini 2, which is interesting. And it's also only capable of 12 megapixel stills, which again is the same as the Mini 2. And it can capture raw images on the Mini 3. So again, very similar when we look on paper, um, but the Mini 3 can capture HDR photos and videos. So you are getting a leg up over the other two drones with the Mini 3 here. It's also got a larger sensor. So it is a one over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. So that means it allows a lot more light in. It's a larger sensor and a lot more impressive when it comes to capturing videos and photos. So that's where it does stand out here. Even though on paper, the numbers are the same, you are getting a larger sensor uh, the 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor and the aperture is f 1.7 so that means that you're actually allowing more light into the sensor which is going to give you some better images and also better performance in low light as well so the mini 3 definitely performs better in low light and the sensor itself is better than the mini 2 and the mini se so when it comes to tracking also known as follow me mode and also waypoints you actually can unlock both waypoints and follow me modes on the Mini SE and the Mini 2. Now I've got some content on the channel to showcase that. You are going to be using a third party application like Lychee, Drone Link, or Maven to unlock these features. But that does mean that these two drones have some very unique, very powerful features in waypoints as well as the follow me mode, which are not available on the Mini 3. So that means that the SDK has been released and third party developers can create features like this that are exclusive to their applications. But again, you can unlock waypoints as well as follow me mode. They both work really well and unlock a whole new playground for you to play around with. So again, exclusive to both the Mini 2 and the Mini SE right now. So right now, the Mini 3 cannot offer you any of those features. So you can't unlock the waypoints or the tracking mode or the follow me mode as we call it. So it is locked out right now. Hopefully in the future that will change. But as the time of me doing this video, you cannot unlock those features. So the Mini 3 actually isn't as powerful, let's call it, as the other two, because you get 
two exclusive modes that are just not available on the Mini 3. But there is something that is exclusive to the Mini 3 that the Mini 2 and the Mini SE do not have, and that's vertical video. So what that means is that you can actually rotate the camera system by pressing a button so that the video will be vertical. Now, as I'm sure you've seen all over the internet, vertical videos are the rage. They're all over every social media platform. So with the Mini 3, you can now natively capture vertical videos without having to edit anything in post-production. You press a button and then you've got a vertical video. So if that's a big calling card for you, then the Mini 3 has you covered and the other two cannot offer that at all. You have to like crop the image if you wanted to get that. And again, if you're not knowledgeable in editing, then that's gonna be a pain for you. But the Mini 3 allows you to do that and it makes it very easy. So let's now talk about some of the zooming options that are available. They are only digital zoom, but they're exclusive to both the Mini 2 and the Mini 3. Now, what you can do is 4K up to two times. And then if you go full HD, which is 1080p, you can go up to four times zoom with both of these drones here. Again, it's digital zoom, so it is going to be a little pixelated and sometimes not overly usable, but the 4K two times zoom is great. And again, exclusive to these two, you don't get digital zoom with the Mini SE. So as I'm sure you're probably noticing so far, there are definitely a few exclusive things that are available for the higher end drones. And that's just how marketing works, right? That's how uh, unique product lines work. Like we've got three distinct product lines here. We've got the budget-friendly Mini SE, we've got the middle-range Mini 2, and then we've got the slightly more expensive, but still budget-friendly Mini 3. So that's kind of how this works, and that's why I wanted to show you some of these differences and some of the similarities that uh, are popping up between these three drones. So one thing that they all share is the same quick shot mode. So they have all of the same quick shot modes that we have come to love on DJI drones. There's nothing exclusive and new in the Mini 3, even though it's the more expensive one. You're not getting master shots and you're also not getting slow motion options on any of the drones. So it's just the basic quick shot modes that are available on the three drones. So now let's talk about the range as well as the live video feed. So this is the controller we use with the Mini SE. It's using enhanced Wi-Fi and it's actually capable of four kilometers worth of range which is pretty great for most people, again, because you need to keep it in line of sight and keep it close to you. But four kilometers of range is great, and you're getting a live video view or video feed of 720p up to 30 frames per second. So that's pretty great for most people. Once you put your phone in, it means that the video feed you're getting to the phone display is going to be 720p at 30 frames per second, which is definitely usable. And now when we look at the Mini 2 and the Mini 3, they are both sharing some similarities here. So so you can get the same controller here with both the Mini 2 and the Mini 3. If you want to get the new DJI RC, which is the built-in screen version, uh, that actually works exclusively on the Mini 3, doesn't work on the other two Mini drones. But if we just look at this controller here, both the Mini 2 and the Mini 3, regardless of which controller you're getting, it's capable of up to 10 kilometers of range and it's using the OcuSync 2 technology, which is great. 10 kilometers of range, again, is more than you'll ever need. And you're getting 720 20p up to 30 frames per second of that live video feed to your phone, which is gonna be slotted in on the top there. So now let's talk about the battery life. Now with both the Mini SE and the Mini 2, they are using the same battery system here. So they are interchangeable. So that means that if I really wanted to, I could swap the two batteries or, you know, put this battery into here and then continue flying with my second battery. So they are using the same battery technology. Um, the Mini SE is giving you 30 minutes of flight time where the Mini 2 is giving you 31 minutes. So you're only getting one more minute with the Mini 2. Um, but that being said, again, you're, you're probably not going to be getting anywhere near that because that's saying that you're flying until the point that the drone basically can't fly anymore. So you want to be bringing it back well and truly before then. So that means that you're maybe getting 25 minutes, maybe a little less on both drones of flight time, which is still great. But keep in mind that both drones have got very similar offerings when it comes to their battery life. Now the Mini 3 is where it really stands out here. This is one of the biggest calling cards for this drone here. If you're using the default battery, which is the 249 gram system, these two together, that will get you 38 minutes of flight time. So that's already an improvement. But if you use the plus battery, you're getting 51 minutes of flight time, which is insane. It's even more than the Mini 3 Pro, more than the Mavic 3, more than all of the consumer DJI drones on the market. So 
Right now, it is the best offering when it comes to battery life. So if that's a big thing for you and the whole rules and regulation thing isn't a major problem in your country, then you're going to love the extra flight time. And that's where the Mini 3 really stands out here. Now, interestingly, all three drones have the same wind resistance. So they're all level five and they can handle up to 38.5 kilometer winds or 10.7 meter per second winds. So all three of them are impressive regardless of the situation you're putting them in. Um, and I would say that they've all held up really well regardless of what I put them through. They're great in all wind conditions, um, but there's no standout here. They're all pretty much the exact same in all situations, uh, regardless of what the wind looks like. And another interesting thing is that they don't have obstacle avoidance. So there's no obstacle avoidance on any of the drones here that we're talking about today. The Mini 3 Pro, which is the bigger cousin we'll call it, or the more professional version of the Mini 3, that actually comes with three-way obstacle avoidance. But on the Mini 3, we're not getting any obstacle avoidance. We're not getting any tracking modes or anything like that. So it is a very basic offering when it comes to um, um, you know, the lack of obstacle avoidance, the lack of active track. It's not giving us any exclusive modes here. So it is the same on all three drones. There's no obstacle avoidance. Um, but like I said, if you want that following mode, if you want the waypoints and you can actually get that on the other two drones using a third party application. So there we go. So that's the three mini drones in today's video, the Mini SE, the Mini 2 and the Mini 3. You can see they're all very similar, similar designs, uh, even though the Mini 3 has got a redesigned body. It's still very similar in, in the sense of its footprint, in the sense of like the concept, the folding mechanism, all of that kind of stuff. I will say with the Mini 3 though, it does have a very cool folding concept where you can actually fold the arms in whatever order you want, where there's actually a system with the other two drones. You actually have to fold the arms in a particular way. With the Mini 3, it's got a redesigned folding system. And I will say the arms on the Mini 3 feel a lot more solid. The drone overall just feels like a more premium offering here. So the the build quality I would say would also go to the Mini 3 uh, being the more superior offering here. So the three drones in today's video are very similar but also have slight differences as well. And that's what I really wanted to highlight in this video, the differences between the Mini SE, the Mini 2, and the Mini 3. Like I said, great drones, all in their own unique kind of price pocket, um, but they definitely work for each budget and each kind of need or, or kind of use case for people out there um, because you know, if you are going to use the drone very rarely on a holiday just to capture moments with your family, then you might just be happy with the Mini SE. You know, if you're just posting basic social media content, then the Mini SE or the Mini 2 might be good enough for you. But if you want to spend a bit more money and get the vertical video, get the improved sensor, uh, overall better video and photo options, and a few of those extra things you're getting, including that massive jump in battery life if you get the plus battery, then the Mini 3 is definitely the one to go for, spending just a little bit more money on that one. So if you are interested in any of these drones, definitely check out the D1 store. Mention Dan's Tube if you send them an email, sales at d1store.com.au. Just mention Dan's Tube and see what they can do for you. Maybe you've got a few things you want to pick up, let them know and they will create a bundle for you and help you out. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'll talk to you in the next one and peace.